the following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. And welcome in, everybody, to a special edition of the High Low Sports Podcast. We're going to go and jump right into things. This won't be a traditional show. We just got a quick few things to talk about here for NFL Minicamp. DJ joined, as always, by Kelsey. And Kelsey, NFL Minicamps are underway, but we... We already got we already got some talk and some things going on here up in Buffalo, spe- featuring your boy Stefan Diggs. Yeah, go figure. The home of the Buffalo Wings <laughs> happens to have all the spice right now. Uh, that is Stefan Diggs, Josh Allen, not getting along, dealing with some issues internally. Maybe they are getting along, according to Josh Allen, but there's still some internal rumblings. Uh, Sean McDermott obviously going on air and talking about how Stefan Diggs left the facility on. Uh, earlier this week, and now there's a whole bunch of drama around Stefan Diggs yet again, and now we're all left wondering, will Stefan Diggs end up somewhere else other than in the red, white, and blue, or sorry, blue, white, and red of the Buffalo Bills? It is very interesting as well. Shows up to minicamp, then leaves, and then to re- allegedly it sounds like he came back today as well too. Whether he participated, we'll wait and see. Josh Allen specifying it wasn't football-related. They're just working through some things. We obviously don't know for sure. That could just be Mike talk. My biggest problem with everything that came out was Sean McDermott saying it is "quote unquote" very concerning that Diggs wasn't there for me camp, and he said it twice. Like you're not helping matters right now. You could just be all you say is we're working on things or we'll, we're looking into it. literally anything else. But saying very concerning kind of puts the onus on Stephon Diggs. That's kind of part of the reason he ended up there is there was concerns about him in Minnesota, what being paid and being part of the offense, things like that. It's kind of the part of the reason you got him. He's been all. He's the most targeted receiver, second most targeted since he's been in Buffalo. It's clearly getting the balls. He just got paid recently. There's something else probably going on there. It could just be a little bit of nothing. I don't know for sure. But when I look at it, I feel like Sean McDermott, as great of a coach as he is, he kind of threw a little bit of kerosene on that fire that didn't need to be there. Yeah, that's to say the least. And by the way, they did re- release the report. He did actually attend minicamp on Wednesday and did participate. Uh, and then, according to Sean McDermott, in the after practice, Despite being very concerned on Tuesday, uh, all is uh, all is taken care of, and the problem is solved. Wrong. No, I don't care what you said. The problem is not solved. Uh, and I, I'll say this. I don't think this is a problem that is actually a problem. I think of people like Michael Jordan. I think of people like Randy Moss. I think of people like Kobe. They always had issues with some of their teammates. Always. And what was the one caveat with them? And you can even add Jimmy Butler, who we just saw in the NBA Finals, Obviously losing, but, you know, I, I, I mean, you even saw in the regular season this year him have a kerfuffle on the sidelines with Udonis Haslam, who you could also add into this list. But there's these are a group of guys whose single sole focus when they're on the football field is a W. An absolute W. They don't care how it matters to get there. But for somebody who was a wide receiver, just like Randy Moss was, in a lot of ways, as far as their mentality goes, when you see your team lose and you weren't involved in that game, you're going to say something and you're going to be mad about it as you should be being a star player, being one of the highest targeted players in the league and being one of the top five best receivers in the game today, arguably top three, if you depending on who you ask there. So there's a lot to be to, to, to talk about with the Stefan Diggs situation. And there's a possibility that this is a situation where Stefan Diggs was being serious and Josh Allen was doing Josh Allen things, which we all know him to be kind of a jokester, kind of a, relaxed type of guy yeah he's serious when when he's between the lines but during practices you always see him laughing smiling having fun you always see the little fun tiktoks on for the buffalo bills so like i don't know how much this is actually a problem and how much this was just like a mini camp i'm still working over the playoff the playoff woes of losing and not being involved type of situation i will say when it first happened the worry scale was maybe at about a five just because it's so abrupt and then some of the things he's been tweeting in the off season, like come rescue me, you, me, you don't want me, don't have me just things like that. Just different things. They tweeted. Plus what he posted on, I think it was IG where he's like, don't do say they be cap and don't stuff like that as well. Right now I'd say it's about a three and a half. There's something there. It's not something they can't resolve. Obviously I think they will be fine, but I, I don't think it's too much to worry about. It could just be game plan issues. It could be just off season. It could be anything. It could literally be anything, but I'm not terribly worried yet for fun though. We're going to have a little bit of fun with it, though. If hypothetically it turns into a situation where he has to get traded, what's a good, what's, we'll just go with one. What's one destination you'd like to see him get traded to or you think would be a good fit? I don't know if I'd like to see him get traded (laughs) here, but I think a great fit for him would actually be the New England Patriots. 
I think I, I, I think I, yeah, I don't think they trade him in division, but I mean, as far as a good fit for the guy, I couldn't think of a better one right there. I think that would be an absolutely fantastic fit. If you want to go in a range of a potential better fit, well, you have the Chicago Bears. And who have the money, who have the cap space, who have the young talent. And, the and imagine sliding in Stephon Diggs along with DJ Moore. And you have to decide, game in and game out, all right, who do I try to double team to slow down? The answer is not going to be I can double team both of them. You have to answer, you have to answer the question of, well, crap. <laughs> who's going to burn me today? And you don't have to worry about Justin Fields not throwing the deep ball every single opportunity he gets. Because you will. And you talk about, uh, you know, relating to Josh Allen, who's the, probably the next quarterback that looks and plays like Josh Allen right now. I don't think there's another one other than Justin Fields. Just in the way he plays, as far as just uh, the tenacity he plays in. I mean, he turns a sack into a 72-yard touchdown run. Like, that's the type of guy he is. So, yeah, I, I look at probably best fit. I'm going to go Bears. But I think the the fit that I think would, would actually, like, really be a great fit for as far as team needs – but just not going to happen would probably be the Patriots. That'd be a fun one. That him and DJ Moore with Joe, that's a dangerous offense real quick. And they have the assets, especially those draft picks to make that happen. So that could be, and you're, and if you're the bills, it makes sense because you're getting them out of conference altogether. So that's a really yeah. good one. Speaking of the NFC North, I'm going to go with the Detroit lions is a good fit for them. Jamison Williams suspended again. He has like one catch so far. He's going to have one catch through his first one games. catch for one touchdown. Exactly. Like his kind of, I'm not going to say a one trick pony, but we have to actually see, him do some tricks basically we have to see him on the field before we know what he is you have a monroe st brown the ultimate chain mover get yourself a stefan Diggs who demands a double team and can go deep jared goff still throws a beautiful deep ball some some people say he might be mvp this year we'll give him stefan Diggs. he's got a damn good chance to make a run at it that division is up in the air they're arguably the favorite and if you start double teaming him and double teaming a monroe jameer gibbs is gonna have 90 catches like there's I think a true number one receiver like that, then when Jamison Williams comes back, that's a lot of speed, a lot of route running, and a whole lot of Amon Ross St. Brown. So I think that's a really, really underratedly good fit for him. I think that's a really, really fun one. Some other teams that I'm trying to think of just another team that'd be fun. I, th- I like the Patriots one. They need a receiver. I think that makes sense. But I'm going to go and stick with the Lions as my main bread and butter one. Or if you just want to be the ultimate troll, him and the Chiefs would just be hilarious. That would just be. I was thinking the same. It won't, thing. It won't happen, but like that would be like my ultimate troll move. That'd be hilarious. You know where? I mean, he might also fit in as well. And I'm just gonna throw that one out there. Might be a team with a star on the side of their helmet. Is that a want or a? Is that more? Of oh, a it's 100. percent I want him on a on the Cowboys. Like, absolutely would love him on the Cowboys, and we'd see Dak actually take that evolution that I would like to see. Uh, but also, I'd stick it in Texas. I mean, you always have Houston as a potential landing spot. Just. I, I mean, you kind of have to accept that you're not doing anything this season. Mm-hmm. Like, and I don't think this, I think that's why this whole thing is like not a actual issue. I think Stefan's in the place where he was going to compete for a championship. He knows that. I think he was just voicing his thoughts on the regular, on the, on the end of the, you know, on what built up in the off season from the, from the, the playoff loss. And it's just like, look as you know, and, and as a person who has this happen many times, what he says and then turns into a, argument because he gets loud is just kind of the, the situation where he probably ran into. And so it was like very concerning to the outside ears because he's yelling at his quarterback potentially. But in reality, he's not really yelling. He's just like voicing his opinion to, to try to get it across because he's just cares so much about it. Like that's, that's where I think it ends up at. I don't think this is actually a problem, but you know, it's fun to talk. What ifs <laughs> potentially. Absolutely. Me and you both agree. We don't think he's going anywhere. We think it's going to be all fine. Week one, he's going to be wearing that 14 for the Bills, and he'll probably catch a touchdown week one as well. I think everything will be all fine and dandy as well. As you mentioned, emotional guy. Emotions are still high up coming off of the end of last year. I'm not too concerned. Like how many times does this guy have to get to the to the, to the uh, division division or, or conference championships? Exactly. Like, like they've been they've been banging on that window for like five years, four years in a row now. They got it. They they're looking to break through this. They might have passed the window. We'll see what that happens with the new Dalton Kincaid if they change some things up. But definitely understand the frustrations, and I think we're in agreement. It's a whole lot of nothing to worry about right now. But we'll definitely keep an eye on it. But that's going to do it here for this quick mini-camp edition of the High Low Sports Podcast. We appreciate you all tuning in with us. We'll see you all again next time.